Hi everyone, welcome back to the next part of this Japan travel series. Today, we're diving into the heart of central Japan, exploring Matsumoto city before journeying to the enchanting onsen town of Kusatsu, nestled high in the mountains for a traditional ryokan experience. Join us as we uncover some amazing places in this region of Japan. We are starting off our journey at our accommodation in Matsumoto with one of the best Japanese breakfast spreads we've had on this trip. I'll be sharing more about this unique hotel experience later in the video, so do stay tuned. Matsumoto is the second largest city of Japan's Nagano Prefecture. It is surrounded by breathtaking Japanese mountain ranges and is home to one of Japan's few historic castles. On the way to the castle, we pass by Nawate Street, famously known as the Frog Street. This place had a wide range of shops offering everything from delectable snacks to unique souvenir items. It is also home to the Yohashira Shrine. It is said that in the past, this area was home to many Kajika frogs. Their calls were an integral part of locals' lives back then and comprised a huge part of the street's atmosphere. However, a typhoon caused the nearby Mitoba River to overflow and flood the surrounding area causing most of the frogs to hop away from the area and never return. But the locals were determined to recapture the spirit of the old days and decided to incorporate a frog theme to the area. The historic Matsumoto castle was one of the main reasons why we wanted to come here. As one of Japan's oldest surviving castles, it holds a special place in the country's history and its interiors remain beautifully preserved. It is also designated as one of Japan's national treasures. We purchased tickets to explore the inside of the castle. Matsumoto Castle is more than 400 years old, and up close, you could truly appreciate the craftsmanship and planning that went into its construction, and how old building techniques like these still stand strong against the test of time. We were in search of a lunch spot when we stumbled upon this cafe, had a whimsical retro flair and had apparently been around since 1957. We decided to try their specialty drip coffees of the Panama and Gisha blends. We also ordered the Cafe Ole, which had a pretty fascinating presentation technique. The sandwiches here were great and the coffee had such a unique flavour. If you plan to visit, do expect a slightly longer wait as it could get pretty crowded during peak hours. However, I think it's really worth the wait. The hike from the previous day had worn us out, so we decided to take it easy and spend the rest of the day exploring the city. Matsumoto is a common starting point for day trips to Kamikochi, a spectacularly scenic valley within the northern Japan Alps. However, do note that they close the area during the winter. From here, you can also visit Naraijuku, a former post town of the Edo period. It is also worth making a trip to the nearby Daiwasabi farm. In hindsight, one of our mistakes was that we should have planned a longer stay in Matsumoto so that we could fully immerse ourselves in some of the nearby attractions. This hotel was one of the more unique stays for this trip. It was sort of like a mix between a modern hotel and traditional Japanese ryokan. The entire hotel was covered in tatami, so it was necessary for guests to walk around without shoes. They had a hot spring bath at the top floor and even provided complimentary desserts. And if you're in the mood for supper, you could head downstairs for a freshly prepared bowl of noodles. We spent around 140 Singapore dollars a night for this hotel and we would highly recommend it if you are seeking a budget-friendly and traditional Japanese experience. The next day, we began our journey to Kusatsu Onsen. To get there, we first had to get to Takasaki Station via the Hokuriku Shinkansen. 
Next, we boarded the Kusatsushima train bound for Naganohara Kusatsubuchi Station before catching a JR bus which took us directly to the Kusatsu Onsen bus terminal. The star attraction of Kusatsu Onsen is the Yubatake, also known as the hot water field. It is the town's iconic symbol, and it is also the largest source of hot spring water for Kusatsu, producing around 5,000 litres of water every minute. The water that emerges is scalding hot, but rich in minerals and carries a distinct sulphur smell. The water is cooled through a series of wooden channels before being used in various public baths and ryokans. Over time, a yellow residue known as Yunohana or hot water flowers builds up inside these channels. This method allows for the residue to be harvested and sold as bath salts, and it also serves a crucial role of preventing heavy minerals from clogging the pipes of nearby facilities that rely on this constant flow of water. Bathing in Kusatsu's natural spring water is believed to offer numerous health benefits. Before checking into our ryokan, we had to catch the Yumomi performance. Yumomi is a unique ceremony aimed at cooling down the hot spring water. It involves the singing of traditional folk songs while using wooden paddles to gently and sometimes violently stir the hot spring water. We will be staying in Tokino Niwa, a traditional Japanese ryokan. Like most ryokan experiences, both dinner and breakfast were included. For dinner, we were served a multi-course kaiseki meal, consisting of fresh seafood and a choice between shabu shabu or barbecue. This dining experience is undeniably the highlight of any ryokan stay, and each dish was not only delicious but also meticulously prepared. This ryokan also had outdoor baths filled with natural spring water, which you could reserve for private use. There's a unique tranquility that accompanies soaking in an onsen at night, especially in the cold outdoors. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey, and stay tuned for the final part of this Japan travel series. 